Hello, Rick off here. Welcome to video number 39 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. In this video, I'll be showing you the results of a five test comparison that I ran on the magnet layout shown in video number 36. And we'll also show how I have used these results to further improve elapsed time performance. Okay, now here's the results of the five test comparison that I ran. And at the top, you'll see that we have the results window that was shown in the last test, and that would be video number 36. And the elapsed time in that test was 5.74, or 5 and 74 one hundredths of a second. I've lettered these all 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, and 1E. Alright, so we have test 1B a little further down. Okay, and then 1C, 1D, test 1E. And then I took average readings. Now the average readings is simply an average of all the uh, individual readings. Okay, so the overall elapsed time average in the five tests was 5.85. And uh, our figure for the test number 36 was 5.74. So that was a low reading, actually, and uh, th this is why uh, taking several tests uh, determines an average, which is a more reliable reading. However, the overall times uh, throughout the five series of tests were very, very close when, when you consider that we're talking about hundreds of a second here and extremely close uh, in the gap times. Uh, if, you, if you noticed, you may have to rewind a bit and take a look at each separate test and then you'll see that the gap times were very, very close in each test. So in looking over the average results, uh, here's what I noticed. Of course, in the uh, section one, the gap time is 0.69, and that's uh, much lower than the others. However, it's not really important to uh, compare uh, the gap time for section one with any of the other sections. It's uh, irrelevant, actually, and this is because of the fact that uh, it being the first group, uh, there's no reverse attraction there. Uh, all you have is the wood of the rotor. As you see here, there's just wood. There's no magnets, no plate here to, to give any reverse attraction. That's why as the test starts out, uh, when we come to this first group, there's a very, very strong attraction and that's what gives it a whip action uh, to get the motion started through the first group. And that's why the elapsed time in the first group is much uh, less than in any of the others. So uh, the other groups do have a reverse attraction from the magnets that have already passed by. And, but the other groups can be compared to each other and uh, we can draw some uh, conclusions from that. Now you see that in the uh, section number two, or group number two, uh, we have not, uh, 0.97. And in the third group, 100. Uh, in the fourth group, 1.12. Fifth group, 0.92. And the last group, 1.15 seconds. Okay. Now, what you notice right away from this is that the fourth group and the sixth group are the longest elapsed times, you see. And my thought on this is, well, and now that I know uh, where the weakest groups are, 
uh, perhaps I can strengthen them uh, and reduce the time in the, the gap time in those particular groups. Uh, therefore, uh, ending up with a closer gap time average uh, throughout the groups. So this is what I did. I started with group six, number six, which was the longest gap time, and I fooled around, tweaked around a little bit to see if I could reduce that. And here's what I came up with. Now here we have the beginning and the end of group number six. I put a double stack magnet right in the center of the group. You see? It's right at the center, right in between these two magnets. Now by adding the additional double stack magnet to group six, uh, here's the result from that. And you'll see that the total elapsed time has dropped now to 5.54 from the previous 5.85. We have a, a lower elapsed time, which is good. And the elapsed time through the sixth group, uh, also known as the gap time, is 0.98 now, where it was 1.15. So that's, uh, that's quite a nice result. I've uh, been able to drop that way down. And so 0.98 is still a little bit on the high side compared with these other gap times through the other groups. However, it's much, much closer now. So just having done that tweak, I can see that um, we've gained some advantage there. Now what was also quite interesting to me was that making this change to group number six ended up cutting down the gap time through the uh, other groups two, three, four, and five. So keep in mind the group four uh, was originally at 1.12 seconds and we just reduced it to 1.07. And here we have the start and end of group number four. And again, we have a double stack magnet in the center. So after adding the double stack magnet to group number four, here's what happened. We've reduced the elapsed time there from 1.07 down to 0.94. Now, that's a welcome change, definitely. And we've reduced the overall elapsed time to 5.49 from 5.54. So we're getting a little gain every time we do a tweak. Now, what groups uh, can you see that we could add some further improvement to? Let's see if we can uh, balance these groups out so the gap time is uh, pretty much identical through each one. What would we need to do? Well, we would need to drop the uh, gap time on groups number two and three. So, uh, we wouldn't need as much of a change as we needed on groups four and six. So, possibly a, a dual stack magnet would be too much. Now here, we have group number two, the start of group number two and the end of group number two. And again, I've placed a magnet at the center of the group. However, this time it's a single magnet. Now here we have the start of group number three, the end of group number three, and right at the center, another single magnet. I see that we're about out of time on this video, so I'll say goodbye and catch you on the next one with a continuation of explanations and experiment tests.